Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. As you can see from the title, we're bringing back the upgrade series for the different starter decks, and we've got a whole batch of new starter decks to work with. So today we'll be looking at Angelic Army, we'll showcase a deck before making any upgrades and play a game with the deck without any changes, and then afterwards we'll gradually upgrade the deck and play a couple games with the fully upgraded deck as well. So let's dive right into it here. Angelic Army, a mono-white life gain deck, featuring a whole bunch of angel creatures as well. At 1 mana we've got 4 copies of Charmed Stray, 1 mana 1-1 one, one with lifelink. If we happen to draw multiples they can accumulate some plus 1 plus 1 counters. Then we've got 2 copies of Tactical Advantage as a cheap combo trick, and one of the Arena exclusive cards. We've got 3 Fencing Aces with Double Strike that play well with combo tricks and auras. We've got the Impassioned Orator, which can gain us a bit of life, which plays great with some of the life gain themes in the deck. We've got Moment of Heroism as another combo trick, also giving lifelink. Pacifism as one of our removal spells. Three Angel Vitality, which gets better the more life gain effects we have and can eventually grow up to a 4-4 flyer. Then we've got Dawning Angel, gaining us 4 life when it enters the battlefield. Sarah Angel, 4-4 Flying and Vigilance. Three copies of Spiritual Guardian, another one of those arena exclusives as a 5 mana 3-4 that gains 4 life when it enters the battlefield. Two copies of Bond of Discipline, tapping out all the opponent's creatures and giving our creatures a lifelink until end of turn. One Confront the Assault, another one of the arena exclusives, making three 1-1 one, one flying spirit tokens if we're getting attacked at instant speed. One Angelic Reward, an aura giving a creature plus, three plus three and flying, so plays great with the Fencing Ace if we can make a 4-4 four, four flying double strike. And then our Curve Toppers, one Inspiring Commander, another arena exclusive, one for a human soldier, and whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under our control, we gain one life and draw a card. So nice card draw engine. We've got a Saros Guardian, 5-5 five, five Flyer with Vigilance, giving other creatures we control Vigilance as well. And finally one copy of Meteor Golem, 7 mana 3-3, three, three, that when it enters the battlefield, destroys target non-land permanent an opponent controls. And then our mana base, 25 basic planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump into a game and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand has two 6-drops and then uh, not much going on in early turns, so that's a bit of an issue. I think I'm gonna have to mulligan. Alright, well, this uh, replaced the 6-drops with cheaper cards, so I guess I'm down. Now what do I put on the bottom? I think I'm just gonna bottom the charm tray. Getting to gain a bit of life early is nice with Angel Vitality, but overall this is the weakest card in our hand. And then we get to curve Impassioned Orator into Angel Vitality with a Moment of Heroism to maybe interact with our opponents. Turn 1 Scorch Spitter, so an aggressive mono red deck presumably. With a turn to Cavalcade of Calamity, the namesake card of the deck. Let's play our first Orator. And hope it survives. It's gonna be a 10th Street Dodger, which can become unblockable basically. Opponent might have a combat trick. So the Spitter deals more damage than the Dodger. The Dodger could become unblockable later, so I think I'm still gonna block the Dodger for now. But I kind of expect there to be some sort of combo trick here, otherwise her opponent probably would have made the Dodger unblockable. Maybe a spectacle card, second main, a light of the stage, alright. Finds two lands, so not the worst. And a torch career. So we can kind of assume our opponent doesn't have any additional lands in hand, otherwise they might have played Torch Courier first. So we've got a few options, I can play the Angel, I can keep up Moment of Heroism. I think I'm just gonna play my Angel. Essentially gain two life thanks to the ability on the Angel Vitality when it enters the battlefield here. And then next turn I get to be nice and mana efficient with maybe Orator plus Moment of Heroism. And I'm just gonna play Defense since I'm not too interested in racing at the moment. Chandra, Fire Artisan, that's a scary card. So, opponent's still electing to attack. 
We do get to kill both creatures here, so opponent just got in a bit of damage. And now we need to deal with this Chandra. I guess I'm just going to play Orator and then Moment of Arism. Which can cleanly take care of this Chandra. Gain some more life. And take a bit of damage from Chandra, so we're still at 14. Scampering Scorcher represents 6 damage with the Cavalcade potentially. We can prevent one of it with our blocker. And not sure if it really matters whether we exile the token or the Scorcher itself. I'll uh, plonk a token for now. Pacifism not too effective against a 1 1, but we could still cast it. Point still at 20. I think I'm just gonna send the Angel Vitality, keep Orator on defense, and keep up moments. Hold the pacifism for maybe a Chandra Spitfire, which is a lot more threatening than a 1 1 token. And then Moment of Heroism can maybe save a creature from a burn spell. It's gonna be Torch Courier. And Shock on Orator, so we'll use the moment to save it. Definitely could have potentially kept back the Angel and attacked with uh, Orator instead, in case they went Torch Courier plus Chandra Spitfire. Because then they could have had a Hasty Spitfire, which represented a lot of damage. Don't think it benefits my opponent to attack here. Another Angel Vitality is a nice pickup. So that's going to gain me 6 life. 3 from each Orator thanks to double Angel in play. So now do I want to pacify anything? Alright, opponent scoops it up, so they couldn't handle all the life gain from Angels of Vitality. And we got there. So one interesting thing to note about that game is that we mulliganed the hand with two of our six drops, and at the end of the game we still only had five lands in play. So it kind of goes to show that you don't necessarily need a ton of expensive cards to win you the game, just the synergies from these cheap creatures are good enough. And as you'll see in the final build of the deck, Orator and Angel of Vitality will still be there, so we'll try and focus more on these synergies instead of having those clunky expensive cards. But uh, yeah, let's get to upgrading our deck. Alright, now that we got to see the deck in action, it's time to upgrade the deck. First off, if you make a brand new account for Magic Arena, you get to upgrade the Angelic Army deck just by playing the game and completing the account Mastery Tree, which has a bunch of white cards you can add to the Angelic Army deck. In fact, the game automatically suggests a bunch of upgrades you can make. I'll talk you through all these upgrades as well. Then once you complete the entire account mastery tree, you unlock a whole bunch of the two-color guild decks, and those decks also contain a lot of white cards that you can easily slot into the Angelic Army deck and make it significantly better without having to spend a single wild card. So first off, I'll talk you through all these upgrades you can make without spending any wild cards, and then finally, in the end, we'll go over all the upgrades we can make to finalize the deck, and uh, that will lead to the eventual final build of the Angelic Army deck. So, let's get started here. So, once you play your first game with the Angelic Army deck and get your first Mastery Orb, you'll get a few upgrades for the deck, including three copies of a Janis Pride Mate. And it's gonna be the War of the Spark art of the card. If you prefer the M19 version, you can still play that one as well. It's also standard legal, even though M19 rotated out. But we get three copies of a Janis Pride Mate, which is definitely one of the centerpieces of the deck. Two mana for a 2-2 creature that says whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on a Janis Pride Mate. And our deck is definitely capable of getting a lot of life and making the Pride Mate into a huge threat. So we'll get three of those. And we also get a fourth copy of the Impassioned Orator. So we go up to four, and then the game automatically suggests a few cuts. It's going to cut two copies of Dawning Angel, and it's going to cut two copies of Spiritual Guardian, lowering the curve of the deck a little bit, which I agree with. So that's where we are after one Mastery Orb. Then next up, if we get one more Mastery Orb, we can unlock the Noble Purpose upgrade, which is going to add one copy of Dawn of Hope which is a 2-mana enchantment that says whenever you gain life you can pay 2-mana and if you do draw a card and for 4-mana you get to make a 1-1 soldier token with lifelink so a very powerful card draw engine that can help you take over the late game so we get one of those 
we get one more copy of the inspiring commander now if you already had an account previously you're not going to have a second copy of the inspiring commander on your account we'll eventually cut a second copy anyway so it's not a disaster and then you also get one more copy of pacifism putting you up to four copies and then the game automatically suggests to cut two copies of charm stray and one copy of spiritual guardian so we no longer have any spiritual guardians in the deck the two charm strays are a bit awkward but we'll cut uh, two remaining copies in a second here and then once you get one more mastery orb you can unlock the radiance upgrade which is going to add one loxodon life chanter which is a six mana for six that says when it enters the battlefield you may have your life total become the total toughness of creatures you control and for six mana the life chanter gets plus x plus x until end of turn where x is your life total so if you have a lot of life then life chanter is going to force the opponent to chum block it turn after turn which is quite powerful so we'll get one of those then we get one more copy of angelic reward the five mana aura giving plus three and flying and as you'll see i also don't have a second copy of that on my account since you only get it if you get a new account and get that account mastery tree upgrade and then we also get one more copy of sarah's guardian which is the six mana rare angel putting us up to two copies and as you can see also the second Seros Guardian is missing if you already had an account and uh, got the Angelic Army deck afterwards. And to make room for these new cards, we're going to cut the two remaining copies of Charmed Stray and we're going to cut one copy of Tactical Advantage. So this is how the Angelic Army deck will look like once you're done with the first couple upgrades in the account mastery tree using the game's own suggestions. Now it's time to further upgrade the deck using the cards we obtain from the multicolor guild decks that we also unlock in the account mastery tree. The first deck that we'll cover is the Celestia deck, so that's the green-white deck that adds a ton of new cards to the deck, including three copies of Healer's Hawk which is a nice 1 mana 1-1 one, one flyer with lifelink. You should already have one copy of Healer's Hawk in your account, but once you unlock the Celestia deck, you'll get access to three copies. So that's going to be a nice little addition for the deck. Then we also get three copies of Conclave Tribunal, which is a 4 mana enchantment with Convoke, so we can tap creatures instead of paying part of the card's mana cost. And then when the Tribunal enters the battlefield, we can exile targets and non-land permanent and opponent controls until the Tribunal leaves the battlefield, so it can even get rid of opposing Planeswalkers, which can otherwise be problematic. So we get three of those. And then we also get access to one copy of Venerated Loxodon, which we can temporarily slot into the deck. It's not going to be part of the final build of the deck, but it's just a powerful card we can add in the meantime as a 5 mana 4-4 with Convoke. And when Loxodon enters the battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature that convoked it. So if you have a lot of cheap creatures to convoke the Loxodon, those will all get a plus one plus one counter. And then finally we get two copies of Take Heart as a nice cheap combo trick, giving target creature plus two plus two until end of turn and we gain one life for each attacking creature we control. So that's going to be a nice little upgrade over Tactical Advantage. And now that we have to cut some cards to make room for these new cards, we'll cut one copy of Tactical Advantage since we've now made room for two copies of Take Heart. We can also cut one Moment of Heroism, which is another combat trick, as Take Heart is a little bit cheaper. Then we also cut two copies of Bond of Discipline, which is one of the weaker cards in the deck, so I don't mind getting rid of it. Then I'm also going to cut two copies of Sarah's Guardian, which is a bit expensive for what it does. And as I've said earlier, I do want to lower the curve of the deck a little bit, so we can cut two copies of Sarah's Guardian. So as you can see, it's not a problem that you didn't get a second copy. And then we're also going to cut Meter Golem, since now Conclave Tribunal covers the same problems that the Golem solved before. So this can help us get rid of Planeswalkers, Artifacts, Enchantments, things that uh, other removal spells don't cover. Then we can also get away with cutting a Lands, since we've now lowered the curve of the deck significantly by cutting a couple 6 and 7s. And finally I'm going to cut one Pacifism, since we've added three copies of Conclave Tribunal, so we should have enough removal as is. So this is a deck after getting the upgrades from the Celestia deck. Next up is going to be the Boros deck, so that's the red-white deck, which gives us access to Light of the Legion, which is a nice 6-mana angel with flying and mentor. And when the Light of the Legion dies, we get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each white creature we control. So fits in the deck nicely. So we get one of those. 
Then we get two copies of Sworn Companions, which is a nice life gain token card, making two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink, the same token we get from Dawn of Hope. And that's also going to play well with our Convoke cards, like the Tribunal and the Venerated Loxodon. Then we also get two copies of Sunhome Stalwart, which is a 2-2 creature with First Strike and Mentor. So when this creature attacks, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. So it plays very well with the Healer's Hawks and the other 1-1 tokens in the deck, as we can upgrade those into a 2-2, thanks to the Mentor ability from the Stalwart. And then the last addition from the Boros deck is going to be one copy of a Rock Charger, a 3-mana 1-3 flyer that when it attacks can give a target attacking creature without flying, flying until end of turn. So also plays well with cards like Sunhome Stalwart since we can attack and then mentor on the Rock Charger to make it bigger. And just in general giving our ground creatures flying can be useful if there's a ground stall. So we get one Rock Charger. Then to make room for these additions, we're gonna cut the Fencing Ace package, which means we cut three copies of Fencing Ace, and we cut the two Angelic Rewards, which mainly played well with the Fencing Ace. So we no longer need those, since we've added a bit of extra evasion with the Rock Charger and now the Healer's Hawks too, so we don't need the uh, Aura giving flying as much. And then I'm also gonna cut one more combat trick, since those uh, combat tricks, especially Moment of Heroism, also played well with the Fencing Ace, which we now no longer have. So that covers the upgrades from the Boros deck. Next up is Orzov, which does add Ministrant of Obligation. as the only card I'm really interested in. A 3-mana 2-1 with Afterlife 2, so when this creature dies, it leaves behind two 1-1 one, one black and white spirit tokens with flying. So we can maybe chum block with the Ministrant and then leave behind some evasive creatures to help us close or help us convoke. So just a decent creature in general. To make room for the two Ministrants, we're gonna cut one Confront the Assault, which also makes spirit tokens. So the Ministrant's just a bit cheaper and less conditional. And I'm gonna cut the last Moment of Heroism as well. Another card that we get in the Orzov deck worth mentioning that you could potentially add to the deck if you like it is Herald of the Sun, 6 mana 4-4 four, four flyer that can put plus 1 counters on other flyers if we spend 4 mana. It's a decent card but it's a bit expensive to get going and I think the other 6 drops are slightly better than the Herald so I'm not going to add it to the deck. Then we get to the Azurius Guild which gives us 1 copy of Unbreakable Formation which is an instant that can give our creatures indestructible until end of turn, so nice against sweeper effects, but more often than not we're gonna cast this at sorcery speed, and then all our creatures get a plus one plus one counter, which is quite nice if we're going wide with a bunch of tokens, so it plays well with some of our recent additions, like the Sworn Companions, for example. And then we also get one copy of Angel of Grace, which is a powerful 5 mana mythic angel with flash and flying, so we can play it at instant speed. And when Angel of Grace enters the battlefield, until end of turn, damage that would reduce your life total to less than 1 reduces it to 1 instead. So if you would die on an attack, the angel can save you and maybe set up a lethal attack on the way back. And for 6 mana, you can exile the Angel of Grace from your graveyard, and your life total becomes 10, which can also be helpful if you're low on life. So we'll add one copy of Angel of Grace. And to make room for these two cards, I'll cut one more Pacifism and one Inspiring Commander, since it is a bit of an expensive card and we want to lower the curve of the deck. Now that we've added a bunch of these beefy cards like the Loxodon and the Angel of Grace, those don't really synergize with the Inspiring Commander all that well, so I don't mind going down to one copy. So this is how the deck will look like after we're done upgrading the deck, just using cards we get from the Account Mastery Tree. So first of the few white cards we get from the Mastery Tree and then all the cards we get from the different guilds. So we haven't had to use a single wild card and we've definitely upgraded the deck quite a bit already. And now it's time to make those final few upgrades using some of our wild cards. And now I'll go over these remaining upgrades in order of rarity. So first off I'll go over all the commons, then the uncommons, the rares and mythic rares. And I'll also go over them in order of importance. So if there's multiple commons for example that you need to craft, I'll go over the more important ones first in case you have a limited number of wildcards. You can uh, prioritize the more important ones first. So the first common we'll add to the deck is a fourth copy of Healer's Hawk as a nice evasive lifelinking creature that's uh, very helpful in the deck, just a cheap creature for Convoke as well, since we will keep all the copies of Conclave Tribunal, so the Hawk is an excellent addition to the deck. 
And then the last common we'll add to the deck is a playset of Solmander, which is not the most impressive one drop, but it is quite synergistic, especially once we start adding even more cards that care about life gain into the deck as a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one that we can tap to gain one life, so it doesn't even have to attack to help us gain life, which is quite useful, especially when it comes to cards like Dawn of Hope and drawing extra cards. So we'll add four copies of Solmander. And those are all the common wild cards we'll need, so only five common wild cards necessary. And then to make room for these cards, we'll cut the two remaining copies of Take Heart. We'll also cut two copies of Sworn Companions. And we'll cut one copy of Ministrant of Obligation, since we're less focused on playing a bunch of tokens and going wide, but more interested in the life gain synergies that a card like Solmander brings. And then next up, it's time to go over all the uncommons we want to add to the deck, and there's not many there. We're just going to round out some playsets. So we'll add a fourth copy of Johnny Sprite Mate, which is a very important card and definitely a centerpiece of the deck. We'll add a fourth copy of Angel of Vitality, which is also very synergistic, especially now that we've added more cards that help us gain life. And we're also going to add a fourth copy of Conclave Tribunal as a nice versatile removal spell. We've even added a bunch of cheap creatures to help us convoke, making the Tribunal even better. And to make room for these uncommons, we're going to cut the second copy of Ministrant of Obligation. We're going to cut one more Pacifism, since we've added one more Conclave Tribunal. And we can also cut a Sarah Angel, further lowering the curve of the deck. So this is all the uncommons, now it's time to add some rares to the deck. And the first rare we're going to add to the deck is two more copies of Dawn of Hope. Just as a powerful late game mana sink and a way to draw extra cards. Since we are, at the end of the day, a creature deck, so we're a bit vulnerable to sweeper effects, for example, and that's where Dawn of Hope shines as a way to help us rebuild and draw more cards against control decks. Now, the third copy of Dawn of Hope definitely has more diminishing returns than the second one, so if you have a limited number of rare wild cards, you can potentially hold off on the third Dawn of Hope, but I would definitely get the second one as soon as you can. Then the next rare I would add to the deck is two copies of Linden. The Steadfast Queen, a nice addition from Throne of Eldraine, 3 mana for a 3-3 legendary creature with Vigilance, and whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain one life, so great in combination with flying creatures especially, like Healer's Hawk and Angel Vitality, so just an excellent way to consistently gain more life, and of course, for each creature that's attacking, we trigger Linden separately, so if we have a Najani Sprite made in play or an Angel of Vitality, those separate life gain triggers definitely make a huge difference, since that means we get to put an additional counter on the Ajani Sprite Mate for each creature that's attacking, and uh, for each creature that's attacking we gain two life instead of just one, so that's uh, a nice synergy in this deck as well. So we will add two copies of Linden, which is also legendary, so we don't want to have too many copies, so two seems just about right. And then the final rare we'll add to the deck is pretty low on the list of priorities, so it's definitely one of the last cards I would add to the deck, and that's going to be two copies of Castle Ardenvale as another mana sink alongside Dawn of Hope, and for four mana and tapping the castle we get to make a 1-1 white human creature token, so that can give us a bit more staying power against the more controlling decks, or if we're flooding out still gives us something to do with our mana if we don't have a Dawn of Hope in play already. So we'll add two castles. Of course, we're just gonna cut two planes for the two castles. And then to make room for the other cards, we're gonna cut the two copies of Sun Home Stalwart to make room for the extra Pride Mate. We're also gonna cut one Rock Charger since we have plenty of evasive creatures already. And then I'm also gonna cut a Loxodon Life Chanter to further help us lower the curve, since now with the Dawn of Hope we've got a nice mana sink for the late game, so we don't have the mana to sink into the Loxodon as much. And then the final step is to add some Mythics to the deck, and the main card we want to add to the deck as soon as we can is four copies of Ajani, Strength of the Pride, which is just super synergistic in this deck. Four mana Planeswalker starts with five loyalty, and we're often going to minus two first, making a 2-2 two -two Ajani Sprite Mate token. So it's essentially the same as Ajani Sprite Mate itself, just in token form. And then the plus one ability says we gain life equal to the number of creatures we control, plus the number of planeswalkers we control, and then the zero ability says if we have at least 50 life more than our starting life total, so 35 or more life, then exile a Jani Strength of the Pride and each artifact and each creature your opponents control, so it can be a one-sided sweeper effect against another creature deck, which is very powerful. So we'll add all four copies of a Jani Strength of the Pride as soon as we can. And then the final mythic is a lot less important than a Jani, but still a nice addition. And that's going to be two copies of Gideon Blackblade, 
which has a lot of abilities. So it's basically a 4-4 creature that uh, is indestructible during our turn. Gideon starts with 4 loyalty and the plus 1 ability gives up to one other target creature we control or choice of vigilance, lifelink or indestructible until end of turn. So the lifelink of course synergizing nicely with our deck. And then the minus 6 lets us exile target and non-land permanent. So Gideon gives us a nice sticky threat that's uh, a lot more difficult to interact with than our other creatures since again we are a creature deck at its core so we can be soft to sweeper effects but Gideon doesn't die to sweepers so it gives us an alternate angle of attack against the more controlling decks. So we'll add two copies of Gideon Blackblade and then to make room for these mythic rares we're going to cut the last pacifism, Unbreakable Formation, Venerated Loxodon, Sarah Angel, Angel of Grace and Light of the Legion. I'm gonna keep one copy of Inspiring Commander, which is not the most powerful card, but it is quite synergistic in our deck, since outside of Linden and Gideon, all the creatures in this deck will help us trigger the Inspiring Commander, even the Ajani Sprite Mate tokens, if we use a minus two on Ajani, will uh, help us draw a card and gain a life, which of course plays well with all these Ajani Sprite Mate tokens as well, and just gives us a fourth card draw engine outside of the three Dawn of Hopes. So yeah, that uh, basically rounds out the deck. Now it's time to give our deck a personal touch. I personally like using the unhinged basic planes that I've unlocked a while back. So I'm going to use those as my basic planes of choice. But you can use whichever one you'd like. And uh, yeah, just got to change the sleeves if we want. Maybe the deck box art and name. And then we're good to go. So I'm going to use these Eldraine sleeves and change the art to Linden. Angelic Army version 2. Alright, so that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. And what do we think of this hand? It's okay. If we don't pick up another turn 3 play, we can just uh, draw a card by hitting with the Healer's Hawk with Dawn of Hope in play. And try and hit our land drops. The Hawk helps us convoke Tribunal. And then a Jani is a powerful curve topper. So we'll start with our Hawk. Facing turn one mountain. And the hawk is gonna get shocked. Alright. Interesting. So sadly, Soulmander will have summoning sickness next turn. So I can't in any way draw a card with the Dawn of Hope over the course of next turn. But I guess I'll still play the Soulmander. Dawn of Hope is more mana efficient. But now I could potentially tribunal next turn if I have to. And I can start gaining life with the Soul Mender. 10th Street Dodger and Torch Courier. Could also elect to trade, which is also reasonable. But I think I'm gonna hang on to the Soul Mender for now. Just because it plays so well with our Dawn of Hope. Alright, Angel of Vitality was a nice pickup. So I'll play that instead. And to play around another shock, I think I'm gonna gain life with Soulmender main phase. So I can make sure I gain two life instead of just one. So we kind of get a rematch here from our game we played before the upgrade. Hopefully we can uh, beat the Cavalcade deck once again. So we're back up to 20. Angel can technically block. And there's a Cavalcade. Eh, let's hope to dodge a shock. I'm gonna block, let's see, Courier is pretty terrifying with the Chandra Spitfire, but the Dodger is gonna be more difficult to interact with, so I think I still block the Dodger here. And then we might see a light up the stage or some other spectacle card, secure the critics instead. Alright. So now I could play a Jani, make a Pride Mate token, And again, to play around Shock, I think I'm just gonna activate Soulmender right away. Our true strength lies in our friendships. And have a 3 3 blocker. And well, opponent just concedes, so I guess the Jani is too much for them to handle. It's another pretty swift victory against the Cavalcade deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a nice low-curve hand. Wouldn't mind drawing a third land, but uh, 
definitely a keeper. And I'm probably going to lead with the Healer's Hawk into a Johnny Sprite Mate. And then we'll see what we want to do from there. Alright, turn on Gilded Goose does block my Hawk, but I can still gain life, which is the important part. So if I draw a third land, I could go Orator into Soulmender or just play Angel. It's going to be a Paradise Druid. And Orator the pickup. Alright, so I don't have any additional way of gaining life this turn, but I guess I'll play the Orator as a more mana efficient play. I can attack first. So if my opponent goes land into Wicked Wolf, they can still kill my Pride Mate and make the Wolf indestructible, so hopefully that doesn't happen. It's going to be a Pelt Collector instead, so the Pride Mate could be safe. It's going to be a Questing Beast instead, 4-4 four, four, with a lot of abilities, including Vigilance and Death Touch. So that's going to end up trading for the Pride Mate, most likely, since we don't have a Conclave Tribunal in hand. And I'll play it first to grow the Pride Mate, just in case they don't block. Opponent will take the trade. And now we can start uh, gaining some more life with Orator to hopefully grow the Angel Vitality. And then Dawn of Hope can help us refuel eventually. Ooh, it's going to be a Voracious Hydra fighting Angel Vitality. So that's a setback. Take three. All right, now what? I could go Dawn of Hope, attack with a Hawk, and then pay two mana to draw a card. Then I'm going to fall further behind on board. I think I would rather just play Orator plus Soulmender and then next turn play the Dawn of Hope. So we'll play the Orator first. To make sure we don't miss out on any life gain. I guess I should attack technically before doing anything else in case my opponent respects the combo trick, but I don't think they do. And then play Solmander. Alright, so this Dawn of Hope is going to be pretty key for us to find some more action, since we're definitely behind at the moment. And this is not what we wanted to see. Could potentially double block one of the 3-3s three here with double orator. They're not attacking with the forests. So I could double block Belt Collector or Hydra. So I think I'll double block Belt Collector. So we're still at 20, but that's not gonna stay that way for long. Although Linden was a good pickup. But I might still be better off playing the Dawn of Hope and uh, start drawing some cards. I suppose I could just tap Soulmender to draw a card. I want to do that main phase in case I pick up a land so I don't miss my land drop. And then I could keep the Hawk on defense to maybe help double block. Eh, I guess I'll attack still. Both at Nissa. I'm happy if the Orator trades for a Growth Chamber Guardian. Alright, so we're starting to draw some extra cards with the Dawn of Hope, but my opponent has a Growth Chamber Guardian that can draw them some more cards too, essentially. Shifting Ceratops. The protection doesn't matter too much, but still a 5-4. So what do we need here? Something like Jani would be helpful. But uh, I'm down to two here, so we're out of options. 
just a land, so I can play Linden, Hawk can attack, I can draw some cards, but I'm probably going to be dead on the way back. I can also start making tokens with Dawn of Hope. But he has that early Voracious Hydra to kill my Angel Vitality. The Questing Beast was eventually going to trade with the Pride Mate, so we're definitely a synergy deck, and uh, if they can take out some of our key creatures like Angel and Pride Mate, our deck isn't super powerful, whereas most of the opponent's cards are individually powerful as well. Eh, so I'm just going to pass a turn here, but I'm pretty sure our opponent can kill us. Guardian adapts. Don't know if they wanted to tap the Paradise Druid there, but... The land shall come for you. Sir Point has seven good attackers. I've got four blockers. I can gain basically two life, so I'm at five. So that still means at least three creatures go unblocked, so I'm taking nine damage at the very least. So yeah, that's game. Alright. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's a bit heavy on uh, three drops, but I don't think I can send this back. Turn two orator. Couple angels facing turn one healer's hawk. Could this be some sort of mirror match? We're missing the Ajani sprite mates, which are pretty key. Alright, so looks like it's maybe a black white version. And yep, when it does have hawk into pride mates, we're capable of the same start, but uh, yeah, we might just get steamrolled by the sprite mates. So the advantage of going into black is that you get essentially a flying pride made at 3 mana, although it does cost double black, so it's not the easiest on the mana. And you pick up some other life gain tools, maybe Oath of Kaya, Sorin. So there's definitely some powerful options available. So I guess I'm playing Angel to start blocking the Hawks. But as I've said from the start, the player with the Ajani Sprite Mates is going to be favored. As we see, Cruel Celebrant. Also a bit of life gain synergy there. And even uh, Scoured Barons. We could always decide to play some of these Enter the Battlefield tapped life gain lands as well, just to um, have a bit of extra life gain built in. But uh, our deck is pretty low curve. So we don't want to have uh, too many lands that enter the battlefield tapped. Alright, so I can go Orator into Hawk. can play second Angel Vitality. But I'm gonna have to start chumping the Pride Mates. The only way out is to... Like, have infinite chump blockers with Dawn of Hope. Which is gonna require a lot of mana. Or eventually find some Conclave Tribunals to get rid of these Pride Mates. So what's the best uh, solution here? I guess Orator plus Hawk to Chum Block. No real point in attacking. And yep, there's Aerialist, so that's the creature I was talking about. The Flying Pride Mates. I guess we're doing this. Soulmander the pickup. So don't have a ton of options here. We're kind of in the double abyss from the sprite mates, which is not a great place to be. So, let's see what are my options. 
I guess I have to probably chump both of those. But it's not getting any better for me. Play Angel. And I guess I'll tank for two. And there's a Jani. Strength of the Pride. So yeah, this was a good showcase of where you can potentially end up if you add a second color. Of course, there are a few uh, costs related to adding a second color. You need all the dual lands, Temple of Silence, Godless Shrine. So those are a couple more rare wild cards, but you know, if uh, you're interested in upgrading the mono white tech and eventually have the wild cards, you can always look into the black white version as well. So I guess I have to double chum block here. And Gideon Black Blade. Not very good when you're behind on board. I guess we'll go out swinging. Freeze. Good games. Thing. All right, we're on the draw. Hands not amazing, but probably a keep. Facing a turn one Temple of Silence. Alright, Healer's Hawk was a nice draw, lets us curve out. Opponent on Esper. With a turn two Golden Egg. So this is probably the new Dance of Demands. Combo control deck. So I'm probably gonna lean Gideon over Angel of Vitality for now, as it's a bit more difficult for the opponent to interact with. Opponent also plays Kaya's Wrath, so we don't want to overextend into that. And I'm gonna give my Orator lifelink, since uh, it only lasts until end of turn. So it's not like I can make my Orator indestructible into the face of a Chaos Wrath. And despite having an island in play, they could still cast Wrath thanks to the mana fixing from the Golden Egg and the Guild Globe. Right, there's a Doom Foretold, one of the key cards in that deck. So I guess I'll sacrifice my Healer's Hawk for now. And now the unfortunate part is if my opponent does have the Caius Wrath, they could sweep up all my creatures and then the Doom Foretold gets my Gideon. But there's not much I can do about it, kind of have to go all in here. So I can go Double Orator or Angel plus Hawk. Since then I can sacrifice the Hawk to the Doom Foretold if they don't have the Wrath. So if they don't have a Chaos Wrath, I might be able to close out the game next turn. Otherwise we could be in trouble. So this is where having, let's say, a Dawn of Hope could be useful as a way to refuel. So they stack the Guild Globe, so I guess they also need another black or white land in order to cast a Wrath, since the Golden Egg only fixes for one color. Also playing out both copies of Impassioned Orator, would have been bad if they had a Legion's End. Opponent takes two. Do we see the Caius Wrath? It's gonna be a Murderous Rider instead, taking out Gideon. Alright. Opponent is at six, so they need something else here. I guess I could always sag the Egg for some life. And that's maybe what they'll do. Sag the Hawk. And a backup Gideon. Seems good. Give my angel lifelink. Prepare for battle. Uh, 
opponent gains 3. Doom Foretold sacks itself. And our opponent doesn't have the mana for Wrath. Don't have to worry about Gideon dying to the Doom Foretold. We're at 39, so if we ever find a Jani, we can use a zero ability right away to get rid of all the opponent's artifacts. It's gonna be Guild Globe. Alright, I'm not sure how our opponent gets out of this. Alright, looks like we got there. Sweet. Alright, so that's gonna wrap up our first episode of our new upgrade series on the Mono White Life Gain deck. Hope you enjoyed and let me know in the comments which deck we should upgrade next. I'll take a look at the comments to see which uh, gets the most votes and then we'll upgrade that one next week. I'll try to make this a weekly series, so expect to see one deck upgraded each week from now on. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.